Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! What are the keys that we must engage if we want to be led of God and led by God? Tonight I will give us five and please every time I call us to pray because we're going to be praying as I teach, I want you to pray with all your heart if and when I request that you do so it is true that God leads but you see God does not lead everybody unfortunately he wants to lead everybody everybody especially in Christ can have access to the guidance and the leadings of God but there are conditions that must be met otherwise you can never truly enjoy the leadings of God are you ready write this down first in your heart before you pen it down on paper number one the first key to enjoying the shepherdhood the leadings of god is admit that you are limited please write it down the first key to enjoying and accessing god as your shepherd is to admit that you are limited first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 the bible clearly tells us there that we first corinthians chapter 13 not 3 my apologies 13 and the orientation you are still limited we pride in all kinds of things i've traveled to europe i've traveled to america i have a phd and that is wonderful of person the meek the bible says will he guide in judgment not the needy not the one who is in need of guidance the meek you know what it means to be meek meekness is a is a spiritual quality is a state of brokenness where you understand that i am limited another word for meekness is teachability hallelujah the ability to be teachable Lord, I thank you for that which you have given me, but I admit I do not know everything. Please give us that scripture again. The meek will he guide in judgment, and he says the meek will he teach his ways. So could it be that the reason why many people are unable to access the leadings of God and the ways of God is because there is a desire to know, but there is no meekness. Admit that you are limited. As a man of God, admit that you are limited. As a businessman, admit that you are limited. Admittance is such a difficult thing for us, especially in our civilization today, because psychologically for many of us, we translate admitting limitations to mean that we are mediocre, to mean that we are not much. So everybody likes to give... Um, a, give an attitude of invincibility to the degree to which you give a, a picture of a superman that seems to be the degree to which a generation will listen to you and be loyal to you unfortunately as far as destiny is concerned that is absolute nonsense Jesus who was the word incarnate as soon as he arrived by age 12, with no sense of shame and embarrassment, he marched straight to the temple to go and learn. You would think this was the person that the scripture was all about. Imagine Jesus sitting in the temple and listening to them. This was the word of God bound in earthly flesh. I can imagine the doctors of the law saying, do you understand this young man? And he says, yes, sir. The meek will he guide for someone here God is already speaking to you the reason why you have not been able to make progress is pride the inability to come before the Lord and say father I do not know much would you teach me what's that song spirit lead me where my trust help me let me walk of God 
you must admit that you are limited father thank you in spite of the bible school in spite of the seminary in spite of all the books that i've read i i come before you expressing my ignorance and my limitations except you lead me i cannot lead these great people you see why the request of solomon touched the heart of god how do you come to a man in the night and now give him an open check solomon would have said that there are five kings that have threatened me oh god kill them for me give me rest and solomon said i am but a young man I do not have the ability to lead this so great a people would you grant unto your servant an understanding heart and the bible says god was impressed he was touched for someone here if you will only humble yourself before the mighty hand of god even now the remaining days of this year what god will do in your life will dwarf many years put together the meek will he guide there are many proud men of god there are many proud business people. There are many people failing woefully and yet they will not listen and open up their heart to see the need to be guided. There are people who are poor and broke and they will not listen. The moment you want to talk about money, they want to contribute as colleagues. You are not getting it. It's not working in your life. There are people who are not doing well in ministry. As a principle, any area I don't have so much result, I'm usually silent. I don't, I don't, I only speak from the abundance of knowledge with results. Our world today is full of commentators, commentators without results. When you know how football is, and some just pass now, the person who is talking now has not been able to achieve anything, and yet he's insulting someone whose weekly payment is his lifetime desire. Are we together now you must admit someone is having a small business for instance maybe you, you are just selling two or three items and only five people come to buy it and now you are giving all kinds of I think ShopRite can do like this I think this one can this people they are not really very wise if it was me and yet you have your own result there and absolutely nothing is working can I tell you, in the name of Jesus, I pray that anything that represents pride, eating up your potential for rising to a, the next level, I curse it from your life right now. The meek will he guide in judgment. There are people who don't know anything about marriage yet they are the first to comment on everything they are the first to give lectures and give all kinds of orientation there are people who don't know anything about finances and favor there is zero manifestation of favor not one not two zero and yet they can say anything about favor there are people who don't know jack about the anointing and yet they will want to teach you dimensions and dynamics and those who are really anointed are just hearing and watching the gap in knowledge garnished with pride Is God helping someone? You must admit that you are limited. That is not negative confession. It is not demeaning what God has done in your life. With brokenness, there is something I do not know. Lord, guide me. The meek will he guide. The moment I've taught you this, when God finds humility and finds brokenness, something there has to be something about this my financial situation i have done my best your best does not mean that is all to be done it is just the best you know based on your knowledge do you know let me tell you ignorance and pride can make simple things so difficult so difficult Apostle, I can drive. Okay, let someone who can drive help you. No, no, no. I've been driving for a long time. It's just I've not had the opportunity to go to the road. Just give me the car. You come back with two headlamps, Paul. Say it was just a slight mistake. You cannot, you are not getting this thing. It's as simple as that. Apostle, I can cook. 
three hours you are still roaming around in the kitchen nothing is done nothing is set you are not even sure again of what you are doing it was just a mistake i think the stove or the the <clears throat> our standard of knowledge in this ministry is mastery until you are there you are not yet there don't say i know to what degree are we together now yes admit that you are limited as a man of god spirit of the living god i cry for your wisdom i admit i do not know i am limited i can learn i can do this but i am limited the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Humility. Number two, very quickly. Is someone learning? What is the second key to accessing the leadings and the guidance of God? Pray earnestly for divine direction. Pray earnestly for divine direction. Listen, when it has to do with direction, it is a risk to assume. The devil can open a door for you that you will think it is God. I've taught you even the prison has a door. Before you enter the prison, a door must be opened. So just because a door is open, you need to verify where that door is going. There are some doors that are going into prison. Pray earnestly for divine direction. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. 1 Samuel. 30 and verse 8 and David inquired of the Lord saying shall I pursue after this troop I hope you know the man who is speaking was a warrior already had the arsenals to bring victory but he said no assumption shall I pursue after this troop shall I overtake them and the Lord answered him pursue for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover it is powerful when you are running with a sure word you don't see challenges on your way because you know that god listen it is vain it to wake up in the morning is that in your bible and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow just because you have money does not mean you should start business no the presence of capital is not a green light to start no we make all kinds of flimsy mistakes and we keep repeating it. That's why God has sent you to the house of God. Can I tell you, when you are physically prepared, you stand the risk of making more mistakes because all the factors are there. Chances are excellent you will not respect the excellency of his voice. Shall I pursue? Shall I overtake? And the Lord says, since you paid attention to my leadings, go ahead and pursue. You shall surely overtake and without fail recover all. You must pray earnestly for divine direction. And there are two ways you hear from God in prayer. Write it down, please. Number one, through the light from scripture. So that will be 2A. Light from scripture. This is the first way God speaks to men. In the place of prayer Psalm 119 I believe verse 105 please give it to us thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path so God speaks to you by giving you light from Scripture is someone learning now light from Scripture in the place of prayer serious prayer not prayer and browsing not prayer and watching movie you are just watching the parts you don't like you quickly pray while you are waiting no no i mean heartfelt prayer when your spirit man is attuned pay attention to the scriptures that come sometimes they can be scriptures ordinarily you would not have remembered you see that but it just jumps up from the spirit is a time to write it down what could god be saying god speaks to us when we pray through the light that comes from scripture and then number two he speaks to us through the voice of his spirit isaiah 30 21 i hope you know god speaks to men yes he does and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it 
when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left you shall hear a voice in John 16 and verse 13 please give us John 16 and verse 13 Jesus was teaching and he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the Bible says he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak so the Holy Spirit speaks he speaks he guides the Bible says the, the spirit speaketh expressly pay attention to the speakings of God when you pray most times when you hear God and is not in the place of prayer the margin of error is very very wide let me tell you because you see the 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 haziness that comes from the daily activities chances are excellent that what you thought you heard may not have been God so number one the first key to accessing the leadings of God is you must admit that you are limited and in need of his leadership number two you must pray earnestly for divine direction number three you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters one of the ways that god leads men is by granting them access to supernatural encounters please write it down you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions please write it down you must open up your heart for supernatural encounters particularly dreams and visions look up ladies and gentlemen can I tell you this I don't know what has happened to your dreams and visions but tonight in the name of Jesus let there be a correction of it there are certain heights that when you get to and your dreams and visions have not been purified you will destroy yourself and destroy others dreams are powerful prophetic channels that communicate the leadings of God otherwise Satan would not be interested in your dreams I can tell you he knows what is contained in dreams and visions Genesis 41 let's read the first seven verses Genesis chapter 41 please and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold he stood by the river reading to seven and behold there came up out of the river seven well favored kind and fat flesh and they fed in the middle uh-huh verse 3 and behold seven other kind came up after them out of the river ill favored and lean fleshed and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river Pharaoh is dreaming now and the ill favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well favored one and Pharaoh awoke he slept again and he dreamed the second time I hope you know this was a revelation of something that had a national economic implication so why would God choose to reveal something that had that gravity I mean a whole nation could be wiped in famine and God chose dreams respect dreams are we together he dreamt the second time and behold seven ears of corn came up on one stalk rank and good six and behold seven thin ears blasted with the east wind sprung up after them final verse now it says and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears and Pharaoh awoke and behold it was a dream there are many things that we have called dreams but they are prophetic blueprints for the next two, three, four, five, ten years of our lives. Sometimes warnings, sometimes green lights. But because we have not been able to discern, next year I have a series 
on prophetic experiences, dreams, visions, angelic encounters. I want to teach you this thing so that you will understand. You have to be able to understand the place of dreams, visions, and even prophetic experiences. If you're learning, say amen. amen. In Exodus chapter 3, give us from verse 2 to 5. Exodus 3, 2 to 5. Watch this now. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the him being Moses now, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. Verse 3. It says, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. While the bush... Help me now. My screen. While the bush is not burnt. Verse 4 now. It says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Verse 5. It says, draw, nigh, draw not nigh here. Put off thy shoes for the place where thou standest is holy ground. So he used a vision, a prophetic experience. Remember, that was the one encounter that turned a murderer to become a deliverer. Many have ignored supernatural encounters. In 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4, this was the encounter of Solomon now. Always inspires me every time I read this. The king went to Gibeon, the Bible says, and sacrificed there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. Verse 5, it says, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. How? So God can appear to men through dreams. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Verse 6. And Solomon said, in the dream, oh, God is asking him in a dream. He's replying in a dream. Imagine if you were Solomon's wife. You went to bed, honey see you in the morning, and while you are sleeping, turning east and west, and all the things people do when they are sleeping, you know, people can turn literally 180 degrees while they are sleeping and not even be aware. They just get up and know that the pillow is, people sleep in all kinds of interesting ways. While all that drama is happening, a man is encountering the God of the Bible in a very destiny-defining way. The wisdom that he would wake up with would be what would distinguish him as the wisest man that ever lived. And yet God chose a dream. Thou hast shown unto your servant great kindness and all of that and all of that. And he asked him for several things. Let's go to verse 13 for sake of time. Let's just do 13 to 16 and then we'll end. He answered him and said, Because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, I have given you understanding like no other person has got. And then he says, And I have also given thee, 13 now, that which thou hast not asked, both riches in the dream now. How do you give riches in a dream? How do you give honor in a dream? So that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all your days. 14. It says, and if thou will walk in my way, still in the dream, and keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen your days. Long life, still in the dream. Last verse, please. Of oh, verse 15 now. And Solomon awoke. So it was a dream. And behold, again the Bible says, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. That means he said, let's dance and rejoice. And the people say, wow, the king is in a good mood. Not knowing that a transaction has happened in a dream. Could it be that throughout this year, God has been trying to transact realities with men? It is not only when you come to church like this, ladies and gentlemen. Every time you go to sleep, see it as an opportunity to step into a realm where destinies are defined. Because you do not know these demons are also waiting with their package. It's like a menu. Fear, intimidation, and the moment you lay your head, there you are in secondary school. 
writing a demonic exam that you never pass or that never finishes and if there is anybody here under the sound of my voice going through those wicked experiences seeing yourself in a former house writing exams that never finish in the name of Jesus Christ I declare you are delivered right now only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end in my life only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end we can access the leadings of god when we are open to supernatural encounters in Matthew chapter 3 please give us verse 13 this one disturbed me seriously because it concerned Jesus himself I hope you know that when Jesus was born he could die I hope you know that Matthew 2 from verse 13 the Bible says Matthew 2 not 3 2 2 and verse 13 and when they were departed the Magi now remember the Magi came to just pay homage to Jesus little baby Jesus now baby Jesus could die if he could not die God would not ask that they run away with him so don't just say Jesus save sinners he had to be alive to be able to save sinners he was going to die but if he died as a baby your sins will not be saved that would just be obituary not salvation and when they were departed behold an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph how in a dream again saying arise take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt look at the exact look at the, the details arise take the child and he told him where to go to he would have said arise and run away what if he ran to report to Herod Herod would say you are welcome there's a room here for you both you and the child wait there it's not enough to say God told me to move to where he, he, he spoke to him he said arise and flee into Egypt then here now he says and be thou there until I come to you again with a word my God may God restore the accuracy of his leadings may God restore the accuracy of his leadings in the name of Jesus Christ a man goes to bed Joseph was a weak ordinary man he would have died Jesus would have died and the entire plan of redemption would have been aborted when you see the excellency of their parenting it was not because they were superior parents they didn't go through parents counseling they only knew how to hear Maybe God is speaking to a family here. Your ability to hear concerning your children will really be the key to their rising. Thank God for all the intellectual systems that help to feed your mind, but nothing will replace the accuracy of the hearing of you. You can give birth to a child and God comes to you and say, this child is ordained to be a prophet to the nations. Take him to a missionary school in Lagos or in Abuja. You have heard the word no matter what confusion comes you will say i know god said this keep that scripture please remain there until i bring you word and he told him why for herod will seek the young child to destroy him next verse when he arose he took the young child and his mother by the night and departed how do you get up from a dream and do exactly what you saw the kind of dreams we're having now if you do everything in your dream you would have been dead by now because our dreams are so weak and not purified by the power of god you dream and you see yourself killing your mother if you get up and do the same thing wouldn't she die you, you see how Satan has hijacked our dreams because of insensitivity. May there be restoration this night. You 
you may say okay apostle i'm not inclined towards the prophetic i may not have the hearing eye and the seeing ear but a dream is a blessing that god gave every man all you need to do is to sleep please help them give us that scripture let's finish it please now verse 15 the bible says and he was there as he was directed by the dream until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet that out of Egypt I have called my son supernatural experiences I shared with you my encounters when in 2013 I think it was preparing and hoping just trying to see if it was possible to come down to Abuja and the word of the Lord just came with a very serious encounter. A plane that lifted from Zaria, it was written E and I, on his way to Abuja. Just when it was about to land, it crashed. That one, the dream was straightforward. Are we together? It was the reason why in 2018, when the Lord came to me and began to speak to me about moving to Abuja, it took me three years i struggled with the voice of god verifications upon verifications because destinies will be part of that decision there are decisions you don't make carelessly except you are selfish hallelujah there are people who just get up and say i feel like leaving my job what happens to your five children how do you feel like leaving your job I feel like driving my wife I feel like having three more children you see we, we we don't listen to God and you find out that the three more children you have are the ones that give you headache because God said stop you didn't hear are we together it's an uncomfortable message tonight but open up your heart to listen Please open up your heart to listen because we are going to pray tonight and one of the prayer points will be purify my experiences so that there are no confusions. Every access that the devil has to my dreams and my visions because I don't have time. I'm not teaching on this. I'm just teaching it as a byproduct of the leadership of the spirit. Otherwise, I would have told you there is something called lying visions. Many today are sincere victims of this. A combination of your emotions and an advantage that demons have taken and many people are being manipulated today it is maritally financially there are people in all kinds of confusions this is why we need to understand the accuracy and the leadings of God there are lying spirits that spoke to people in dreams your father is about to die that company is yours and the boy just sits down and is waiting every day I know what I had there are people today you see by reason of what I do I am amazed at the things people do and the confidence they have they tell you that God spoke to me and when you vet them you will truly know they had from the spirit except that by judging from the lens of scripture it was something else but as far as their conviction is concerned they had a right to be that convicted because of the clarity of what came to them. But when you judge it from the lens of scripture, it was not God. Please listen carefully. And you can be a prophet and still be in error. Just follow me. I'm a good pilot. We're flying high, but we'll land safe. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural encounters. I know somebody that I once prayed and ministered deliverance to, a lady. This lady got up and started running out of the house, going to some river, and you know, and she said, voices speak. Do you know how many people have committed suicide today? And they will tell you a voice said, kill yourself, kill your wife. No, you judge the speakings of God against the integrity of scripture. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have not opened up your heart to the realm of dreams and visions, there is a dimension of the leadings of God that you may be robbing yourself of. And we are going to pray tonight. Some of you do not have access to dreams. 
it's the blessing and a privilege to all the saints in Christ and some of you our dreams have been corrupted all kinds of spirits have manipulated our dreams we lie down and we get up and have all kinds of leadings we follow those leadings sincerely but the end result shows that it was not God is someone learning number four how do we access the voice of God what are the many ways that the Bible teaches what is one of them number three supernatural encounters number four are you ready now one of the ways that God leads us in principle is through counsel from authorities especially spiritual authorities please write it down counsel you can access the leadings of God by opening up yourself to receive counsel from spiritual authorities fathers mentors elders men with results and experience they all form part of this group and they have earned the right to be able to give counsel proverbs chapter 1 from verse 1 follow me patiently as we read the proverb of solomon the son of david king of israel verse 2 it says to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding three to receive the instruction of wisdom justice and judgment and equity verse four to give subtlety to the simple and to the young man knowledge and discretion that is the intent of the book of proverbs now it says the wise man will hear and increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels verse six to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Seven, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Eight, my son, a father is speaking to a son now, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Is someone learning? Verse 9, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto your head and chains about your neck. That means they will bring you honor. My son, if sinners entice thee, this is counsel coming from a father, consent thou not. Next verse. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lock privily for the innocent without cause. This is a young man naively exploring life and destiny and the father is saying these are the options you will find on the way when you see these options manifest remember the counsel of a father he said consent thou not 12 let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit we shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our houses with spoil 14 cast in thy lot among us let us all have one purse 15 now we're reading to 19 he says my son walk not thou in the way with them god is speaking to a son through the wisdom of authority refrain thy foot from their path he says verse 16 for their feet run to do evil and make haste to shed blood 17 surely in vain is the net spread in the sight of any bird do you know what that means when you put a a um a, what they call it a net a bird has had access to a higher altitude and it can see he's saying one who is open to counsel is like a bird that is higher than the limitation that put that that the devil the trap that he puts for you verse 18 and they lay wait for their own blood and lock privily for their own lives. The last verse now, 19. It says, so are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Counsel from a father to his son. This is my counsel to you. As you sojourn, you are going to meet this and that and that options. But every time you are presented with these options, the Lord is speaking to you through my voice. Can I tell you, many people have been saved from disaster because of counsel. Counsel is powerful. Counsel is powerful. 
there is nobody who should ever outgrow the need to be counseled are we together again this is where the pride of a generation comes in and then what the bible calls vain glory we feel because i have achieved this and that and that we are not open to counsel counsel is very very important every time i have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith or anybody who has accomplished something that i consider to be a voice or a stakeholder in my life i listen very carefully i ask intelligent questions and my heart is opened to receive to hear what they say even if i don't exactly see things that way at least i give it a listening ear oh do ministry this way do this this way okay i listen albeit i will go to god in prayer but i i, I respect results when i hear counsel from spiritual authorities when you are open to receive counsel then you will access the leadings of god sometimes god will not come directly it may not be through a dream it may be through one wise counsel gentlemen the way you are doing ministry you are not going to get credibility this way and you will not rise take away this take away that do ministry with integrity this is how it is done I remember a gentleman who came and met me and this guy had posters as if he was coming out for election I said what is this he said I'm beginning a ministry I said from nowhere my brother come let me save you pain what in the world is this that's not how we do ministry you just come out from nowhere and carry posters and keep giving people by the roadside and believe that you will do ministry no that's not how it is done and I showed him from scripture that when God leads people he leads them step by step and he gives them territories little by little he said lest you occupy an empty territory that you do not have the capacity to feel you see that when God moves people he moves people by growth little by little you will see a young man that has never bought a bicycle he just comes and apostle I saw a Range Rover somewhere I know God is a God of speed speed is not foolishness you go gradually do you know what it means to maintain a car at that level how much do you have see this is how and men of God we have to be wise and help people don't just pray about everything because they say you should pray about it can be a chance to give them wisdom hallelujah one time a gentleman met me, not, not in Abuja, and he said he wanted to use a particular stadium for a program. And I just laughed. He said, wow, what a powerful zeal and revelation. But you are about to pay the price. Most likely you will be in the prison. Most likely. I can already plot the graph of the pathway of that foolishness because he will most likely borrow money. He will most likely meet liars. He will not even know which organization. He does not even have the influence to confront the authorities that will give him access to the use of the place. So most likely, it's not prophecy. Most likely, just by the pathway of wisdom, you can know that that gentleman is about to destroy his ministry. Apostle, I know what I saw. Yes. Respect what you saw, but bring it to the table of counsel. Counsel is powerful. Let me tell you. I used to criticize men of God years ago when I started not not in a sarcastic way but I just used to talk you know the zeal of trying to establish doctrine it was an old woman that came one time after listening to me she just called me and said listen my son you are going very far and by the time you start talking about men of God you have not gotten to their level to know the challenges and the pressures that they have so manage this with wisdom that was a big deliverance in my life Big deliverance. You will never hear me talk out of sarcasm. I may challenge wrong doctrines, but my honor for the body of Christ, for authority, for men and women of God is one of the greatest key that has opened my credibility across the body of Christ because of one counsel. Is God speaking to someone? You may be running around trying to meet prophets whereas your own mother carries the wisdom of the ancient you have not sat down to say mama i know you're a ceo flying across the world but could it be one counsel mama can give you she didn't go to school i know but the wisdom of god resides with her is someone learning open up yourself for counsel 
and when you are listening to people who have results counseling you even if you don't agree keep quiet respect and honor their speakings you can go back and cross check and edit like the Berean but at the point never sit with someone who has results and be discussing as colleagues it is foolishness please hear what I'm telling you don't say I'm a doctor we are all doctors you just graduated you are yet to get a job this man has been a professor of medicine for 23 years maybe before you were born as I, you know I, I, there's something I need and the person is watching you when great people keep quiet and watch you start praying because it means that they have seen that there's no hope talking to you again I hope someone is getting wisdom in church listen to what I'm telling you for some of you you have ignored an opportunity to rise because when you sit down with the great, you sit down with pride and arrogance. Let me hear, you know, let me tell you this. I don't claim I know so much, but it is stupid for you to say I don't know anything. No. There are many people I talk with in ministry and the rest. And sometimes I'm speaking with them. This person does not have any results. And yet you see the person just talking. You are suffering. Doors are not opening. You think all it takes to ministry is preaching? Good luck. <laughs> a mediocre world is very small you can go around it in a moment and not see a need to expand your mind are we together counsel for someone, you need to write a list of all the things that are not working in your life and trust God for grace. Why is my business not working? I've been in ministry. I'm a person of integrity and I love the Lord. Don't just say pray for me. I know if you declare one word, all the trouble, your foolishness just goes with one word. You need counsel. It took you years to build that kind of mindset. What makes you believe one prophetic declare? declaration will just take away losing you there are wrong relationships you need to cut away from there is a reorientation and an approach to life and ministry and business you need to learn the law of honor there are many things you need to learn what makes you believe one prophetic prayer will just magically take you there no some of you have had access to great people and you abused it because of foolishness you need more than prayer you need counseling I'm hard tonight, ba. Sorry, oh, but listen, listen. It's from a heart of love. This is what should happen in the body of Christ. I am one believer who believes in translating spirituality to a context that improves your life, where you can go back and bring results, results that are potent, results that work. For someone, you may need to call someone and say, I'm so sorry. I, I downplayed your counsel in spite of the results that you have given my sincere apologies even if you do not agree with great men do not fight them respect their opinions you can live quietly are we together now years ago a man came to me and he wanted me to pray and um, it was about a financial issue because his children he was not able to pay for their their needs and he was getting frustrated and he said apostle you, you need to help me and I was trying to explain to him I said no 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 and then he made a statement he said you don't know what it means to pay the school fees of two children then I looked at him with pity mixed with honor <laughs> if two children are giving you this kind of headache and you see somebody leading a ministry like this and you are saying to you you don't know what it means to pay the school fees of two children <laughs> there is nothing sustainable that is by luck just have that at the back of your mind you can have short-term success by luck but there is nothing sustainable that is by luck. Believe me. 
Maybe God is speaking to a politician here. You are about to start and someone has been in politics. Even if the person has not succeeded, he has failed enough to be able to help you. Respect failure as much as you respect success. In fact, fear people who have not failed. They are too, they are too innocent to counsel you. There is a requisite level of failure you must carry as a badge to balance your understanding in counseling people. Believe me, anybody who comes to you with 100 over 100 is still a child in the school of success. There, there is a requisite scar that gives you a balanced perspective. Have you failed enough to be able to talk to me? Don't tell me all the stories. I just prayed and the person was healed. I just spoke and they gave me an auditorium. You are not the person to counsel me. I respect you. Carry your results until you learn the other side of life. My goodness, there are people that have failed enough and they can talk to you. When they talk to you, they utter from their pain. Their pain has been turned to wisdom. Every sentence is a life lesson. When you find failures who have become successful, respect them beyond the results you see. A man who tells you, I came to Abuja here and for five years I did ministry wrongly. I met false prophets. I dappled my hands into so many things. But thank God today I'm walking in integrity. Sit down quietly with a notebook and learn how to do ministry right. A woman who tells you, I have been barren for 10 years. Now God gave me three sets of twins. Forget the twins and learn wisdom. Don't just respect crowns, respect scars. The wise respect both scars and crowns. Can I encourage someone? Your failure is still an asset. Don't throw it, archive it. It will be one of the qualifiers for your speaking to people tomorrow. Ah, God is speaking to someone tonight. Help that woman, please. Apostle, I have cried. I have failed in life. I know what it means to be an irresponsible father. Don't throw that experience. Archive it. One day you will use from that wisdom and mentor an arrogant young man who thinks life is so easy. Most times when we are starting out in life, because of the leverage of prayer, the prophetic, or generally life just playing games with you. You can believe life is so easy and you are wondering, so why are people crying like this? I just got married and three months, it's been so rosy. In fact, my wife is the best thing that has happened to me and you go online and embarrass yourself and someone who has been married for 15 years, he said, may God help you. <laughs> After two years, you just turn and start saying, life is unpredictable. All these this unwise things that people do. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. for someone do not just respect those who have succeeded alone respect those who have failed not everybody fails respect those who have failed failure is an asset when you can turn it to power Paul said let no man trouble me it is not only anointing that I have there are scars. Man of God, that you failed in ministry and came here and sat down now. I know men will laugh at you and say you don't have results. Don't worry. 
there is a story through your pain that only you can give there is a time that destiny will make a roll call where are those who have failed come forward and you will be the only one to be able to stand and come out because your failure has earned you a place in destiny you know what it means to be attacked you know what it means to be barren you know what it means to do ministry for one year without anybody sowing into your life gentlemen don't just look for those who live in mansions go and look for mama and let her teach you the secret of happiness in a hut there is something you need to learn because the money you think will come from the mansion you will be surprised you don't know the depression and the drugs that surround those mansions sometimes you need to learn from both a king but you need to learn from the slave that is in his palace there is something the slave can tell you that even the king does not know the slave is the one who cleans the palace he knows what he has seen there My glory, the lifter up of my head. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. He's my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. That would be somebody's song. That you're my glory, the lifter up. Mama, you may be struggling with four children and none of them seems to have been great. Let them laugh at you. There is a story only you can tell. Continue being diligent, training the children. Let the naysayers keep gossiping. Shame on her. Four children, nobody rising. Don't worry. Let them celebrate their success while you celebrate the art of turning failure to success. the Lord speak to a young virgin through an angel and says Mary you are highly favored and the next thing that follows that woman is pain controversy there was nothing in the life of Mary that I have seen that looked like favor an angel comes from heaven and says you are highly favored I would expect the king to call her and say I had a dream there is free land for you. As soon as Jesus is born, you become tax free. That sounds to me like favor. So God calls car favor. He calls controversy favor. He calls pain favor. Why would you say a woman is high? Ah, God is speaking to someone. Don't listen. You may cry, but don't be embarrassed about your failures again. There is glory through the sky. There is something about the speaking of God, Ba, that until you are at your lowest moment, there is something about the voice of God you cannot hear. There is, there is a pain requirement to hear certain things about God. Tonight's message is very deep. For some of you, you really will not understand it this night. You are too innocent. You have been shielded by the sacrifices of others. You may not really understand this. There is a pain requirement that brings out the clarity and the purity of the voice of God. There is a way a man of God fails and fails and fails in ministry that he goes back and he says, Lord, teach me. When he writes a book about the leadership of the Spirit, read it. That pain has purified any flesh and the need to make a name. It's gone. That is the reason why when people go through things and they come out of it, they usually come out with an anointing. Barring for 16 years, laughed at by people, 
and she gets triplets it's not only children she got the day she speaks over you she will terminate barrenness in a moment because every time she sees you like the high priest she's touched with the feelings of your infirmity let me tell you the truth you see many of you see today that I pray for people and I'm just speaking and you see the power of God it's not only prayer and anointing oh there is a pain requirement that has reached down to the bowels of power and has drawn genuine authentic spiritual power when I see oppression I know because I have been oppressed counsel 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 is someone hearing you may need to humble yourself seek counsel godly counsel not on wise counsel sit down there has to be a way about my life speak to me God speak to me speak to me ministry has to work this thing between me and my wife we are beating ourselves every day and then everybody will enter his room personally and pray in tongues it shouldn't be like that where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here i lay down my own place to carry on you fire today the first time we had our crusade we were owing we were not much things did not go well I knew it was a process but I said Lord we cannot do ministry this way no I don't want to live a life where you are preaching and you are owing you are in trouble many people are, are dying right now there are many preachers that cannot stand on stage and preach people just fall down and die like that because of a pile of problems and I said I don't want to have to manipulate people I am going to encounter a lot of wealthy and influential people. Why do I have to change my sermons? Because I want to attract favor. There has to be a way. Through desire, a man, having separated himself. Please hear me. For someone right now, what you are hearing from me is not just a preacher. It is pain giving you counsel. Man of God, the way you are doing ministry, you are only going to end up in jealousy and pain and you will join the queue of frustrated people and you will think everybody went to collect charm from a herbalist. Retrace your step and go back through the power and the dignity of kingdom integrity. Dig that well and find treasures that last. Are we learning? This is more than preaching tonight, oh. This is the Spirit of God speaking to you. There are many of you, you need to stop what you're doing now. Stop that business, stop that contract, whatever. Just stop and seek counsel. Because your continuing it is about to reschedule another season of pain. Listen to me. Time does not turn ignorance to knowledge. Time does not turn pain to joy. You must bridge time with wisdom. Are we together? Seek counsel. I thought I had God, but the five areas I thought I had God, none of them has produced the result that I want. I think I need to go back and find out. I may be missing something about hearing God. I thought God said I should start ministry. But I started and it looks like it's not God. Let me go back again. Three days before Koinonia would start in Abuja here, I was still on a retreat, re-verifying again. God, please, is it you? Look beyond my humanity and let me hear from you again. If it is not you, I will cancel it. Let's finish up. So number four, counsel from spiritual authorities. Number five, the fifth 
platform that is available to access the leadings of God is the prophetic ministry. This will be my last for tonight. And I want you to please pay attention. The prophetic ministry. Both the office of the prophetic and then revelatory gifts. The prophetic ministry is a very unique ministry given by God to the body of Christ because when you look beyond the imperfections and the imbalances around the prophetic, the prophetic is a mysteriously powerful tool that can bring rest and direction, comfort to a man within a moment. Age-long confusion and captivity can come to end in a moment if and when the prophetic is, ad, is, ad, is administered within its jurisdiction of relevance. An example of the power of the prophetic reflecting the leadings of God. First Samuel chapter 10, beginning from verse 1 to 7, please. First Samuel 10, 1 to 7. This was the encounter between Saul and prophet Samuel. The Bible says, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head, the he being Saul, and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Verse 2. When thou art departed from me today, you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelda, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek have been found and lo thy father had left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you saying what shall I do thinking his son had been devoured maybe by a beast or so verse 3 then thou shalt go forward that's the assignment of the prophetic it helps you to go on forward from thence and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. Verse 4. It says, And they shall salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. Five. And after that you shall come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with the psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them, and they, sh and they shall prophesy. Verse 6 now. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man the last verse it says and let it be when these signs are come unto you that you shall do as occasion serves you because they have become proof that god is with you the prophetic ministry is very very powerful because of its unique ability to access the eyes and the ears of the spirit and to reach into the past and to re reach into the future, transport spiritual realities and bring it to you. Now there are two dimensions of the prophetic as you may have learned. Foretelling, that has to do with declaring things before they happen and forth telling, declaring things to make them happen. One is revelatory, another is creative. You need to know this. Are we together? Two dimensions, two levels of the prophetic. There is the prophetic that declares happenings events before they happen it is revelatory there is the prophetic that declares things to make them happen it is creative both are dimensions of the prophetic but now i'm particularly talking about the revelatory dimension of the prophetic another example of this we find maybe for time's sake we may not really be able to read everything is the story of a man prophet called elisha king ben Hadad, and then one of his boys called hazael you find that in second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 elisha came to damascus and ben Hadad, the king of syria was sick the Bible says it was told him saying the man of God is here verse 8 and the king said unto Hazael Hazael was like an aid to him take due present in the hand and go and give the man of God and inquire of the Lord 
he said inquire of the Lord but through the prophetic shall I recover from this disease are you seeing why kings in ancient times were great because they didn't take chances they took advantage of the prophetic so Hazael went to meet Elisha now and gave him a present even every good thing of Damascus 40 camels burden can you imagine just to inquire of a prophet and he said thy son Ben Hadad king of Syria had sent me to you saying shall I recover from this disease this is where I want you to lend me your attention now pay attention see the power of the prophetic and Elisha said unto him go and say to him thou mayest certainly recover but Hazael let me tell you the truth I have seen it he shall die he said listen I don't want to break his heart just tell him he shall recover but I will tell you the truth I have seen it as a prophet he shall die now 11 is where my story begins Elisha now turned down his countenance until he was ashamed and he started crying after telling Hazael that Elisha now starts to cry and Hazael verse 12 looks at him and he says my Lord why are you crying and he said because I have seen the evil that you Hazael will bring you are going to set their strongholds on fire there are young men you will slay with a sword you will rip children out of the stomachs of women who are with child can you imagine the prophet was saying I'm weeping because you Hazael as innocent as you look as a messenger now I have seen by revelation that you will become king and you will be a cruel and a wicked king I am warning you now hear what he said Hazai, verse 13 Hazael said but what is your servant a dog that he shall do this great thing you see the prophetic has reached into the future and he's saying young man you are still surrounded with all kinds of poverty and pain your loyalty is not genuine it's just because you are in a condition you've not been exposed to the delicacy of the palace I have seen that there is evil in your heart instead of the man to say pray for me I don't know my tendencies in the future he said the Lord has shown me that thou shalt be king over Syria when you read that story the life of Hazael had to be cut short because when he became king he was cruel and he was wicked everything Elisha said that he said he would not do he did the prophetic can look at an armed robber today and say don't throw him completely there is a prophet in him the prophetic can see a supposed well-behaved gentleman today and say this boy needs counseling say no 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 he's my finest of sons he said you don't know what this gentleman can become the prophetic has a way of reaching to discern the intent in the heart of men that even the careers do not even know is resident within their heart there is almost nothing happening across the nations of the earth that has not been forewarned by scripture and with the lips of prophets some ignored some received Now, the prophetic sadly, just like the apostolic also, has had its abuses and imbalances because you see, the nature of the prophetic is that because the prophetic appeals to your emotions and your psychology directly, everyone wants a sense of security and certainty. It's a psychological need. So if I prophesy to you right now, and I'm, I'm not just declaring, I call your name and I tell you tomorrow, one billion naira is coming into your account from somebody you see you will be excited and afraid and many other things that by the time that one billion comes tomorrow the next time i say don't travel you will not travel because the memories of the results from the last prophecy this is what has sadly turned many people in the body of christ especially the prophetic community into slaves these are the imbalances that need to be dealt with because the prophetic has a side effect the prophetic commands tremendous loyalty because of the result that it produces and if and when that prophet or the person operating in the prophetic does not fear God sincerely you can turn God's people into animals 
There are marriages today that have broken because of the prophetic. There are children, there are people who have gone out of the will of God because they came to honor the prophetic. So as much as I talk about the prophetic, it should never be ignored. But I can tell you, there are many biblical requirements that need to be in place before you open up your heart to the prophetic. Before I receive from you as a prophetic, as a prophetic person, there are many things I need to look at. Number one, I need to look at the strength of your consecration. Number two, I need to look at your prayer life. Number three, I need to see the supremacy of the word of God at work in your life. If I do not find these things, I do not trust your speaking. What you say does not have to be inaccurate. The margin of error is wide, too wide to be received. It is not the correctness of what you say that makes you an accurate prophet. And it is not the falsehood of what you say that makes you a fake prophet. Are we together? Many of us right now sadly have been victims of the prophetic. The prophetic is powerful. But there are many people who left jobs they should not have left. You ask them, why did you leave the job? He said, a prophet came and told me, you have the call of God, get out of that. Someone will come and say, your wife is a witch, for instance. I'm not being sarcastic. You know I love the body of Christ. And I love the prophetic community too. Imagine as a husband, you go somewhere and someone secretly calls you. And because there's some kind of witchcraft manipulation, maybe in your wife's family, and that person is not sound with the word to be able to discern what he has seen properly. He now says, Oga, you have been staying with a witch in your house. I wish you good luck. Imagine you are such a man, ladies and gentlemen, and you get home and your wife is happy, makes her hair ready to receive you and gives you a big hug and say, honey, I prepared a special meal for you. Uh-huh. Special meal. Everything you hear, you will relate it from the lens of that prophetic. What makes the meal special? What have I not eaten in these 10 years of marriage? You want to kill me? Let me just say it. And you see, fight starts there. There are people who in one day, their entire theology can come to naught because of the presence of the prophetic. We must embrace the prophetic. Some of you here may have been disappointed by the prophetic ministry, but let me tell you the truth. Do not make the mistake that many are making to throw away the prophetic and say it is unnecessary. The prophetic till Jesus comes will play an active role in destiny actualization. However, I must tell you, the prophetic must submit to the supremacy of the word of God because the prophetic, if not managed, especially by individuals who do not have consecration and character, it is going to turn men into beasts. It will cause more havoc than it will cause redemption. Are we together? In Acts chapter 11, we're about to pray. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. The Bible talks about a very powerful prophet called Agabus. It says, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem. Came what? Prophets. So in the New Testament, there were prophets, not just one. Came prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch. Verse 28. And there stood up one of them called Agabus and signified by the spirit that there will be great famine across the world. Are you seeing the prophetic now? The Bible says which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. 29. We're reading to 30. Then the disciples, every man, according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Verse 30 now. Which they also did and sent to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. That means in a meeting like this, prophets came to Antioch and one of them called Agabus got up and said, Listen, God has shown me something that there is coming a famine. How many prophets across the globe cried and began to warn that there will be recession, there will be wars. First, the prophecy of scripture that when the end time is about to come, nations will rise against nation. Is that true? That kingdoms will rise against kingdom. It is not new. It is in your Bible. But the Bible says in Matthew 24 that this is only the beginning of the birth pangs. 
I have said it again. No matter what kind of fight happens in the world, it is not war that will bring Jesus back. There is only one sign that brings Jesus back. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the nations and then the, earth, the end will come. Everything happening today on earth has happened before. The thing that was is the thing that is. And the thing that is, is the thing that is to come. There is nothing new under the sun. Is it famine? Women ate their children. It's not even gotten that bad. Is it third world nations becoming first world nations? Is it advanced nations retrogressing? Is it leaders being corrupt? Is it corrupt leaders repenting? Is it national redemption? Everything we are seeing is already captured in the prophetic dimension of scripture. But additionally, there have been men and women that God has raised across the globe who have heralded some with uncanny precision the unfolding of events. Many have been ignored. Historically, men and women have always made it a duty to persecute their saviors. There are many men and women of God who have warned. Many have warned. In business, in ministry, here Agabus warned and said so and so would happen. Let's see one more prophecy of Agabus. Acts 21 from verse 10 and 11. Agabus had the courage to even warn Paul, mighty Paul. It says, as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea again a certain prophet named Agabus. 11. The Bible says, and when he was come to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews in Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. What he said was the truth. But Paul said, listen, I will go through that risk on account of the gospel. I am surrounded by a very prophetic community. You can imagine when you are connected to people across the globe, there will be a deluge of prophetic words day and night streaming from everywhere and it is my duty under God to use the lens of scripture and decipher that which is for my reception and that which I will ignore but it will be the biggest foolishness of anyone even in this end time to throw the baby and the bath water and say I do not need any prophetic word in the midst of all the false prophecies make sure you don't throw the true one that comes as a bailout system hallelujah God has used me to bring prophetic direction to people and to ministries to leaders and to kings I have been directed by myself myself by the privilege of the prophetic I have seen all shades I have seen all dimensions of the prophetic believe me maybe not all but I mean I've seen I've seen I, I mean that I've seen a vast dimension of the prophetic I've had the honor of sitting with people I just returned from Ghana and you know I, I think the Archbishop is probably one of the spiritual leaders on earth that I know that has raised about the highest diversity of the prophetic community I know you see that is the truth and so when I have the opportunity to sit with them like this usually I would discuss what about the prophetic do I need to learn and I, I could not imagine through my times you know and the relationship with him the the level of spiritual orientation I have received alone about the operation of the prophetic many people who teach about the prophetic are not prophets just because you prophesy does not mean you are a prophet there is the prophetic office given to a man hallelujah we need to pray for all the prophetic and then by extension the apostolic community in this nation and on earth because the prophetic and the apostolic community is much needed but these are the two groups of people that have received the greatest attack by the devil the greatest character flaw has come from these two offices greatest mismanagement in ministry has come from these two offices Everyone who is truly called into the apostolic and the prophetic, 
demands and desires your prayer, including the person speaking to you. You have no idea of the attack that is schemed at the prophetic and the apostolic because of the sensitive nature of the assignment. Hallelujah. We need the prophetic. God has called you to be a prophet here. Your first assignment is to be careful. Don't go around harassing people with your limited knowledge. There are people who come to church and when everybody is seated, they start moving from row to row. You are Sarah. No, 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 I'm Grace. So, well, one day you'll be called Sarah. That's what I mean. You are a liar. You are lying there. Instead of you to repent and go back and retrain yourself, it doesn't mean you are false. What kinds of gimmicks and games? If you are not hearing, you are not hearing. You can grow. Are we together? Or those who go to families and harass people. You just knock the door, peace be unto this house. And you say, well, I've been instructed to come and pray with you and have a vigil. You have all kinds of problems and you start harassing people. One of the biggest mistakes of the prophetic is mammon. Mammon. Mammon, you mix the prophetic and money, you are going to destroy yourself. Maybe God is speaking to someone here. There is wealth with the prophetic, but not by manipulation. The moment you start asking people, bring money, bring this, bring that, bring money so that I will see for you, so that I will hear for you, it's just by the mercy of God. Now, please don't go around condemning people. Remember, both good and bad, we are all growing. God is helping us. So this is not for you to carry tonight's message as a weapon and go and say, as you are talking now, I already know the person I will call. And you go and call somebody and say, listen, now you have been deceiving me. Bring all my money, all the money, 11 million in all. Return one by one. That's not what I'm teaching you. But you must be very careful. The prophetic, we must restore the accuracy of priesthood and the sanctity of priesthood. Are we together? There is nothing wrong in blessing a man of God, sowing into a man of God's life. There is nothing wrong with a man of God challenging you to give, provided it's within the boundary of integrity. The moment you start playing games and you start scheming and now start adding a lot of prophetic manipulations and then one of the, the corruptions of the prophetic is employing extra biblical practices alongside the prophetic even if authentic this is one of the things that has downplayed the purity of the prophetic again like I said when I teach I teach from a standpoint of love it is only God that knows what he has told people. It's not my assignment to condemn, but it's my assignment to bring God's people to order using the reference of doctrine. Are we together now? Yes. There is no amount of prophecy you will receive that has not had its parallel in scripture. Nations were prophesied to by a man and in 24 hours things change. So by the time people start sending you to do all kinds of things, you know, I don't want to start mentioning, you know the things that I'm talking about. There has to be a lot of care and caution. Now there are prophetic signs. There are prophetic tokens. Yes, it is very possible. Jesus washed, put mud in the eyes of someone and said, go to Siloam and wash. An angel came and stirred the water in Bethesda. I understand these things. But there is a way that you operate that it is outside of the jurisdiction of Scripture. You are going to lead people into perdition. Hallelujah. But as far as the leadings of God is concerned, I'm praying even this night that God will raise a caliber, a new generation of prophets in Nigeria and Africa that will be a correction of the mistakes past in the name of Jesus Christ. Most of the apostolic and the prophetic community, I say again, the challenge is usually lack of character, mammon, pride. In many parts of Africa, the crop of prophets that is just a, a, a product is, is almost a mess. It's not even something to talk about, sincerely. And many are gifted genuinely in terms of the gifting, my goodness. But as beautiful as the gift is, 
it comes with such an ugly life and a, dispos a disposition that it cancels out the beauty and the purity. The prophetic, the gift will attract people to you. It is your character and stability based on scripture that now glorifies Jesus. Are we together? By the time I prophesy to you, and you say, oh, man of God, that's true. You have a company like this. I say, yes, you earned 150 million this month. Yes, sir. How did you know? I say, now, now that I've seen that amount, you'll be mistaken to think that prophecy, that prophecy will finish with just telling you that amount. Go and carry 30 million if you don't want to die. Rush with it and stand in front of my office tomorrow. You just bought a Jeep. Yes, sir. How many? Three. Carry two. First to my house. You have 10 houses. Yes. What are you doing with 10 houses? Oh, God just said I should build. Did he tell you one is... No, no, all those kinds of things. I'm not being sarcastic, but we need to repent. When I say we, I add myself in it. Whether you are innocent or not, when you are addressing the body of Christ, you must include yourself in it too. You don't stand from a standpoint of self-righteousness and say we and say them. Mm -mm. I don't do tell them. If one fails, all of us failed. If one succeeds, all of us succeeded. Are we together? But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is my prayer that through you or around you, that God will send authentic prophetic voices. Haven't told you some of these negative parts of the prophetic, I submit to you by God. The day you are privileged to have access to the accurate and accurate prophetic office. Balance with scripture, with character, accuracy in hearing. You will, a, your lifetime can be downloaded in a moment and you will get up with, you will start running like the foxes of Samson. You will now know that the reason why you have been marking time is because of lack of hearing. There are people who have, who have achieved so much in destiny in one year than many have done within two decades because the prophetic, God used the prophetic to give them wisdom. As much as I prophesy to people, I am a very principal beneficiary of the prophetic. You see, my coming to Abuja, in addition to what God told me, God used a lot of prophets and some of them with precision I cannot begin to tell you. With accuracy and precision, almost every new season of my life that is about to unfold, there has to be one prophet across the globe somewhere, maybe connected by relationship or even total strangers that God reveals to them. And some of them come with the sincerity of heart and bring that word and... It just opens up doors. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Koinonia, please hear me. This end time demands sensitivity in understanding the leadings of the Spirit. If you really want to actualize destiny, for some of us after this service, you need to use this week to at least have a one-day retreat and say, Lord, the way business is not working for me, speak to me. What am I not doing well? What am I not getting well? Or are you even in this in the first place? When you call on him, he will answer. If God has helped you here to be a man of God or to be a prophet, please, I beseech you by the message of God, if you don't have an answer to people's problems, be secured enough to give them intelligence from scripture. But don't be under pressure to tell lies. There are many times people come to meet me and say, Apostle, I know. And you know, those are the kinds of statements that now massage your ego and you are now tempted to lie. Apostle, I, I traveled all the way from America. I'm here right now. And I knew the moment I see you, one word, aha, uh -huh. And you now say, okay, um, now that you have, you have encouraged me like that, how in the world do I tell you I will go and think about it? And that is why even genuine people 
I hope you know lying is not falsehood, it's just sin. Many accurate prophets have lied. The same way many false prophets have told the truth. Hallelujah. We don't lie because we are false. We lie because we are human. He said God is not a man that he should lie. When they met Balaam, remember that? Let's not go there. Let me just talk about something else. Let me encourage maybe servants of God who are following or those who are here. Please do not be under any pressure to tell lies. If it is something you need to pray about, you can tell the people, please give me some time and let me pray. You may need to consult like doctors do. You see, the doctor will say, okay, allow me. This is new. In my 35 years of practice, I've not seen it like this. Let me call another colleague in India or another colleague somewhere and just send the samples and let's look at it and compare notes. But it's only men of God who are proud. We are know it all. We sit down and die and tell lies rather than just opening your heart to say, listen, I, I may not have clarity about this issue, but let another person speak. Hallelujah. People have lied about election. People have lied about, about uh, the economics. People have lied about so many things. We need to be very careful and not get under pressure. But let me encourage you, do not be a slave to the prophetic. Open up your heart to receive the prophetic within the jurisdiction of his relevance. But hear me, this is what will keep you to the end. The voice of a prophet no matter how accurate i hope you know there are many things god said in the bible that did not come to pass it does not make, make god a fake prophet many many things he said would come to pass for instance it is his desire that all men get saved are all men saved there are people going to hell every day is that true The Lord is my shepherd. We have come thus far by the leadings of the Spirit. I cannot begin to give you instances of the leadings of the Spirit. It's December now, and one of the things I hope to teach you before this year wraps up is the power of retreats. Most of us do not know how to hear a word from the Lord and then to run with it. It is risky to just celebrate Christmas alone. Beautiful Christmas tree, by the way. Let's appreciate our lovely people and the flowers here. Hallelujah. But if all you are thinking about is just celebrating Christmas, eating chicken, cow, and running around, going to visit friends, family, that is wonderful. But there must be something within your heart to say, Lord, I need your leadership. Guide me. I am tired of making mistakes in my life. For someone, God is speaking to you. People will not continue to forgive your mistakes forever. There are mistakes you are going to make that may cost you your relevance for the rest of your life. And God himself is calling on you right now. And he's telling you, it is time. There are levels in life. These people are keeping the Christmas tree instead of them to focus on what we are discussing. We just commented the, the tree. It doesn't mean that... Um, are we together? You flog it out with destiny. Lord, I need your leadings. I make certain mistakes before I got married, you may say. But now I have five children. I cannot afford that mistake again. Because while I suffered alone, now there are five people there. I made certain mistakes. We were ten in ministry. But right now is a ministry with branches all over the world. I cannot afford that mistake again. Listen to me. Stagnation, mistakes, unnecessary errors can be eroded in your life if you understand the leadings of the Spirit. The meek will he guide in judgment. There are fathers here who need to just go and sit with your family and say, let's pray. Even though I'm the head of this home, I confess I do not have all the answers. We need to go to the one who is the fountain of wisdom. 
and to hear him speak to us. There are leaders who need to retreat and say, listen, even though we are great leaders, we do not have all the answers. We need to go back and trust God to speak to us. Hallelujah. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. I will seek you. the leadings of the shepherd you see when Jesus came in the New Testament he said I am the good shepherd a shepherd leads sheep and if you know anything about sheep sheep does not have horns they don't have any external system of defense the only defense of the sheep is the leadership and the security that the shepherd provides that means when the shepherd is not there the sheep is exposed to wolves, exposed to lions, and all kinds of wild animals. Listen to me. It is a dangerous thing to sojourn this earth just using intellect, using brain work. Your mind is important, your brain is important. But the Bible history and experience have shown that any man who sojourns this complicated destiny, not paying attention to the leadings of God, will eventually end up in catastrophe. Many began their work arrogantly and even began to clap for themselves before the journey started. Today, many of them have had their heads bent in shame because they've had to learn by pain and by experience that when God does not lead you, you will go nowhere, even if you think you are moving forward. It is by you that I run through a troop. It is by you that I leap over a wall. God is speaking to someone. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight.
your first prayer point tonight is to declare Lord I am a follower I confess that I cannot lead myself I have attempted to lead myself in politics I have attempted to lead myself in marriage I have attempted to lead myself in business I have attempted to lead myself even in my spiritual sojourn I have attempted to lead myself in ministry is someone praying but I return to you O oh, captain and guardian of my soul someone is praying I make up my mind that beyond a listener I am a follower follower of the leadings of the spirit someone is praying if I had followed you 20 years ago I would not be where I am now for there is a way that seemed right unto a man the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death some of you have followed friends and associations some of you have followed the 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 philosophies of men some of you have followed your ego some of you have followed the path of ignorance but the shepherd is calling you tonight i am ever willing to lead you someone is praying pray from the depth of your heart I make a commitment, oh God, that I will be a follower. I will follow your leadings. I am tired of rigmaroling around the corridors of destiny. It's time for me to make constructive advance spiritually, maritally, financially, ministerially, professionally in my career. Is someone praying? Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Family man, pray. Professional, pray. The continuity and the excelling of your destiny depends, depends, depends on the leadings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When this ministry started, and even when God started lifting us, I went to the Lord, and you would notice as a ministry, we have never done any conference or any convention. It's unconventional. I mean, a ministry this size, globally speaking, and yet God gave me a word and said, do not. My life is a product of the leadings of the spirit when this ministry started that was a time when most ministries would generate their revenue through audio teachings tapes media ministry generally and the lord gave me an instruction and said you will not sell any tape or any teaching but you will put it online and my angel will take it to the nations and with the foolishness of that instruction i obeyed and the rest to him be the glory please listen it listen to me I'm about to pray for you but I sense very strongly in my heart that there are people here that God is speaking to and saying listen you have been ignoring my voice for a long time you are already getting to a point where you are exhausting the boundary of God's mercy it is dangerous to be at the other side of God's voice because the voice of God is where his power follows. His power will always go the direction of his voice. Maybe there are people in ministry right now who need to go back and say, Lord, lead me. I'm tired of assumptions. You have done 10 businesses, none of them succeeded. Calm down. What you need is not more capital. What you need is to sit down. Man of God, you may need to sit down family man you may need to sit down what is wrong the bible says proverbs 18 1 through desire a man having separated himself seeket and intermeddled with all wisdom it is okay to not know what is wrong but at least calm down for someone god is speaking to you you are rushing too much you are jumping from pillar to post and in your mind you do not believe anything is wrong you just believe that maybe they are just like you need to sit down your life is not going forward. 
there are people who came into this Abuja 10 20 years ago respectfully speaking but until now there is no single door at least if one door opens we can say something is happening no you can't be in the middle of that that kind of plethora of 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 failure and then just explain it away no something must be wrong sometimes pain is a signal that your destiny is calling you but not that version of you you need to sit down listen there are family people who need to go and sit down and say why is this home not working son fighting with father they get up in the morning he's boxing husband fighting wife beating themselves no you need to sit down there is something about the leadings of the spirit we're ignoring there are people today you find them exhausted their entire finances is is spent on flight fares europe today america today abuja tomorrow italy next week what are they looking for opportunities the voice of God can save you that kind of pain. Are we together? Some of you right now are about to do business with armed robbers because you do not care about the voice of God. I don't care. Perhaps that's why God brought you to church tonight. To give you a word of caution that there is a, word, a way that seemeth right unto a man. Maybe there are men of God. Some of you have started fraternizing with wrong groups and wrong relationships. They are beginning to introduce you to extra biblical practices in a bid to get more money or to get more fame. You are beginning to practice things you know are ungodly. Perhaps God brought you here tonight to tell you, listen, you need to settle down. He brought us to church. We are about to pray. I want you to listen. This is more than a man of God preaching tonight. The good shepherd is calling you. There are whole families that God is calling. He called your great-grandfather. Your great-grandfather said, ignore me, I'm a, I'm a professional farmer. And he died like that. He called on your grandfather. Your grandfather said, no, I'm a ritualist, I'm a herbalist. I, I, I can do this. He called on your father for some of you, they ignored. Now he's calling on you. Help them, please. Do not allow your children suffer because of your pride. This is a word that is coming from God to someone. Do not allow your children suffer because of your pride. If you have not got direction, stay with God and humble yourself. Use the keys that I've given to you. He's able to breathe upon the sincerity of your meekness and speak to you. You can call him in prayer and he can speak to you through his word. He can speak to you audibly and directly in your spirit. Hallelujah. He can take advantage of supernatural encounters and speak his will to you. And in the multitude of counsel, the Bible says there is safety. He can speak to you through the voice, the successes and the pain of many. And he can speak to you through the prophetic. Which one have you ignored? Which one of these did you laugh at? Which one of these did you sit at table castigating and tearing down? Don't mind all these prophets. They are all fake people and you are in trouble that only the prophetic can bring out. Maybe time to retrace your step, lovingly and respectfully speaking. Some of you have ignored counsel. Nobody talks to you. No, nobody talks to you. I'm a man all by myself. After all, I'm a millionaire. I have money. I have this. Doesn't matter. No. You are going to crash land. That's for sure. And some of you have never taken out time to pray for your destiny. You have turned men and women of God to slaves. Man of God, I just want to sow a little seed. I hope that you'll use it and pray for me this night. The covenant of priesthood demands that we pray for all the people under our care. But can I tell you, there are some of you, the, the reason why you are still stagnated is because you have not made up your mind to take your next level serious. The day you shut yourself bar for three days and you mean it with God, like you shut yourself and say, I am fasting only to break at night. Lord, I am tired of this situation. Please give me an answer. It was God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, who shared his story and said that things were not working for him. And they decided to set themselves to pray. 
and it was while he was praying God gave him a few keys and one time they were praying in Kaduna and the Lord asked him to come out and he saw a thick layer of darkness and he rebuked it and it rolled away printed the publicity material and that was the end of it forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary the primary goal of lifting Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be Holy God's fire!